six learnings from the book Alibaba, which I was pretty impressed with. Okay, so Let's quickly get started by the point number one. The tip number one, the one number, the first learning was you will fail in life and business initially, but you will find new creative ideas, new ways to sustain and flourish. Okay, what does that mean? So initially, if you if you have heard about the Jack Ma and uh, Alibaba story, that was not his first business. So a little bit about Jack Ma. Jack Ma was born in, uh, of course, he's from China. He started, he he was very bad, you know, as, as, a, as a kid. He was poor in English. He didn't have, have a, you know, good formal education. He was, he failed many, many times in his life. He was even rejected by KFC when he, when he was go, he's gone there to, uh, he went there for an interview. Out of 24 people, he was the only guy who was rejected for the job. He applied for Harvard so many times, he got rejected. So he got so many failures in life. He improved on his communication English. He used to go to one of the hotel, Peninsula or some other hotel uh, in China. And uh, he used to go there every single morning. He would go out there and there will be tourists which, who will be coming out to stay in that hotel. And he will take those tourists for the walk in, in the park. So he will become their tourist guide for free in exchange to learn English for free, right? He did that for not one or two or five years. He did that for nine years, man. That is amazing. So nine years, constantly, every single day, whether it's raining or snowing or whatever it is, he'll go every single day, talk to those people, foreigners, so that he can improve on in English. That is how he built his base. And that's why his communication is much, much better than a lot of Chinese uh, people back in those days. They had that accent, but Jack Ma is really good in communication. So he failed a lot. He failed in all the jobs and everywhere. But then he, you know, he even started his first company, which was Hope. You know, that was the um, translation, the Chinese translation company that did not do well, right? Then he got into another business that did not do well either, okay? And then finally he started, he was at the, the peak of the internet, the WW, no, the World Wide Web peak. At that time there was nothing in China, but he persisted and he built his company Alibaba. How he got this? He got these thing ideas from his second company, which was more focusing on building the websites for different hotels and different companies. He visited New York, US and he found something about the internet and he was fascinated about it. He went back and he started this business of, you know, second business after the Hope translation. He started his second business and then third business was Alibaba. So first two or three businesses, they did not do really well. Uh, he was even teaching uh, English communication in one of the college for a couple of years before starting all these uh, businesses. So you will fail in life which he did. He will, you will fail in business, which he did initially, but ultimately it became super successful. He got creative ideas just because he was persistent and he kept his mind open to find new ideas. That's number one. Number two, customer first, employee second, investor third, right? Jack Ma was a very people-oriented person, right? He always focused on how can I empower the customers, how can I serve them more? And then he also wanted to have a great culture with employees as well. He always was somebody who would motivate them. Uh, for, for very few people may know that he was also um, trained in martial art, right? So you may not know, but yeah, he was he was trained in martial art as well. So he was, he was very humble, very fun loving, very people's person. He was inspired by one of those books in China, which, which had probably a 17, 18, uh, you know, warriors or monks. And he named his initial 18 people when he started his business. There are 18 of them who started this from a small house, small apartment. They started building, you know, the e-commerce website, Alibaba. He named all of them one of, you know, after each monk. And he was the one who was the main guru of them, who was very passionate about people. So he always was people focused. So he always focused on how they can 
serve customers and then employees and then invest last. One more example was when he was uh, he started his business for almost four or five years, he gave away his services for free. You know, his platform, the Alibaba, served, connected different B2B businesses from China, US and all. They were able to exchange the goods and products for free, right? Vendor registration, free. Sellers, free. Buyers, free, completely. So he did that for more than four or five years. So that really shows how much he served the customers. And then, you know, of course, he did not do it alone. He got funding as well from different uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, and then later from um, Mas Masayoshi's son, uh, and, and 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 third also for, from Yahoo. So, but he, you know, he focused on customers first, employees, and then investors. Third is embrace the power of giving. I think I already covered it, right? He gave, 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 and then finally he got what he wanted in life, right? So always be a giver in your life. That's what I learned from this as well. Number four, have big vision and follow it. Did he not have big vision? Yes. There were a lot of uh, you know, people, especially the big banks and all, Goldman Sachs and all, they were really impressed with his vision and the way he was working, the way he was passionate about, more than his company. I mean, he proudly says, you know, Jack Ma says that Alibaba had no plan, had no idea, no business structure, but it became what it became just because of luck. That's what he says. But honestly, he was the one who was driving force and his charisma was so good that people trusted him. That's when the SoftBank, you know, founder, CEO, Masayoshi San, he trusted him because, you know, he also comes from Japanese background, Jack Ma from Chinese. They had a lot of similarity. And uh, just moment he met Jack Ma, he, he, was, he was just flattered and he just, he was ready to give all the money <laughs> that he could. First set of investment which happened in Alibaba was through Goldman Sachs. That's where they invested, I think, five million, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, then Masayoshi San, uh, that for that they probably acquired forty percent odd stakes in Alibaba. And then SoftBank invested about twenty million, and that was again about twenty percent some some share. I think about, roughly about that. You know, don't quote me on that. And then finally, the Yahoo invested one billion. They sold actually their China business to uh, Alibaba. So, if you see, how was he able to pull off all such big investment with no plan and the, just a small team fighting against other local competitors and who were who were funded already? They were loaded. Other competitors who were in e-commerce at that time. A couple of them, uh, like there was in China.com, was really big. They had good funding. He was able to beat them as well because of a personality. So have, you know, because of a big vision and his personality as well. That brings me to a next number five, which is be humble and real. He was always humble. He is always real. You know, be it on the stage, he was humorous, right? He was humorous, he was humble. Uh, he never claimed big thing that he was a smart guy. He was always downplaying. And that's what, that's what people like about him. Number six, the final is people skills and culture, work culture, very critical to build an empire. I think he has proven it. He had built the, um, the culture so strong. So, that, so one of the things which probably you might not know is he knows least about the IT and technology. Okay. Number one strength that he had is people skill. Number two, was the business skill and number three was the technology or technical skill he was not at all technical right so that could be one more takeaway right if you want to be an entrepreneur big entrepreneur don't just become a technical guy you need to have a big vision and you need to have a business acumen to become a big guy if you be a technical guy you will always remain technical you know there's a plumber why do you think the plumber remains a small plumber because he's a technical guy and he does not know how to grow business Plumber never hires a lot of people and delegates the authority, he does not put the system in place. He wants to do things on his own, right? So that's why a lot of businesses don't grow. That's the ultimate, ultimate thing, right? He was a people person. He would he would let his employees uh, you know have shares of the company, he would advise them what to do, he would lead them, he will motivate them. 
he had that culture and belongingness. They would always have some, you know, outings and, you know, team culture. He used to say that, you know, he, there's a beautiful saying. He said, today is bad. Tomorrow is worst. But day after tomorrow is beautiful. But most of us will not survive tomorrow. But if you do, you will have amazing life. And that's what exactly happened, okay? It may not be the exact word to word, you know, chord, but that's what, you know, it, he used to say in his interviews. And he really, really lived up to it. People who seen tough times initially, they really, really thank him because you know what Alibaba is now, right? After it went public, uh, it, one more fact, right? When it went public, it was valued even bigger than all the other competitors just below Microsoft, even bigger than Walmart and Amazon. 300 plus billion when he, when it went public in round funding, I think probably it was second round or one first, I don't know. But it, it was so massive. It's a different thing that it just came down the curve. Uh, it lost, again, biggest loss also happened because of the initial spiral moment. But Alibaba is Alibaba man, it's giant, it's, it's amazing. It's not just e-commerce B2B platform. It has got, uh, you know, B2C, you know, uh, B2C platform as well. And then it's got Alipay as well, which is the payment. It's got probably, I think, 20 or 27 plus different small, different companies merged together in Alibaba group. And, and Alibaba is amazing. So this is my learning from the book, Alibaba, the amazing Jack Ma, the amazing journey. If you like this video, uh, do give me a thumbs up. And I want to hear what are your takeaways? You know, have if you heard about Jack Ma's uh, you know, story and if you, if you, Thing, anything I missed, anything you're learning, anything that you want to share with the audience, please leave it in the comment box below because that will really motivate others as well, right? So this is your friend Dave Gadvi. I'm the author, speaker, business coach, and mentor, and I'm on a mission to help inspire and empower 10 million people. If you've not done this already, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I've got a couple of great applications as well. I've built a community. I've got... Uh, my own radio show on Anchor. Just look me up, search Dave Gadvi or just search uh, Daily Dave Gadvi on uh, Anchor. You will be able to find me. Okay, I have a Care Nation community. You can communicate with me and be part of my community. You can sign up for my newsletter as well, weekly newsletter. All right. Thank you so much for watching. This is Dave Gadvi telling you to stay great and be amazing. All right. Take care.